Well, coming up on tonight's episode of Faith versus Culture, it's time, Christians, for a brutally honest talk about the things we've seen and about the things that are coming. That's coming up next. To have a sex before you marry is a bad idea. Don't tell me there's no such thing as gun violence. That just depends on your definition of when life begins. There are problems of sin and habit that cannot be solved outside the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of Faith vs. Culture right here on the CBN News Channel. My name is Dan Andros. I'm the managing editor at CBN's FaithWire.com. And I'm joined, as always, by author, pastor, Dale Partridge. Hey, Dale. Hey, brother. Excited to chat. Um, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about uh, what can we talk about? And then we realized that there's just an <laughs> endless amount of information to talk about. Yes. And uh, lots of need for clarity for Christians today, needing biblical truth to replace the cultural lies that are... Uh, flooding in everywhere. And I think that we need to root ourselves back in scripture, uh, root yes. ourselves back in uh, prayer and the peace of God uh, that surpasses all understanding that we can uh, be at peace in this time. Uh, but at the same time, we can also be faithful, uh, have, uh, you, know, you know, stand for righteousness. It doesn't mean that we're passive. It just means that we're faithful. And I think a lot of people are looking for the definition, uh, the instruction, uh, the duties uh, of the Christian today. Yeah. And uh, when we, when I reference there at the top of the show, the things that have been happening there, so much has happened since last time we were able to do uh, a live, you know, show here for you guys. And um, obviously, chief and foremost among those are the impeachment hearings and um, the Capitol riots that took place. And there's there are so many issues that are that are have arisen from that, and I think they're sort of peeling back uh, different different other layers and issues that we have lurking underneath there that may be problematic. And so often as we do on this show, we want to try to reset you and point you in the right direction. Because I know I've had a lot of things thrown at me, Dale, from just, it's amazing just saying something like, wow, this was a disgrace, what happened at the Capitol. You had an officer die, another one later committed suicide for reasons exa not exactly known. Um, but you'd have to think just by, you know, logic that it would be something related to the events that happened where where uh, a woman was ended up losing her life because she was storming the capitol with these other people and so um but people defending those actions and saying well what else are we supposed to do um and and so there is there's a lot that we need to talk about here and having a brutally frank conversation as christians and dale as we often talk about as you often talk about um we got to do some self-examination where does our hope lie and as you said, that's, that doesn't mean we don't do anything. That doesn't mean we don't act. That doesn't mean we just go put our feet up and sip some tea and say, well, God's in control, so I'm good. No, obviously we're commanded to pursue righteousness, justice, mercy. All those things we're, pursued, we're commanded to pursue, to love our neighbor um, and further the kingdom of God. So not denying those things, but how does that manifest itself? What way glorifies God? And um, sometimes that's not always, it's not just always this clear answer. But I think we can see where we fall off the rails. And so I think if we're unable on either side to, to admit that, we've got to start examining ourselves and find out what's going on underneath. Yeah, I think that Christians just really need to recognize, um, I believe it's Philippians that talks about our citizenship as Christians is in heaven. Um, now, it doesn't mean that we don't partake in the uh, citizenship of our nation does it mean that we um, check out passively uh, and allow certain things to occur uh, under our watch? No, we need to stand up for righteousness uh, as Christ is righteous. Um, but, you know, we don't take sides with the world system. That's not what we do. In fact, I would say that we are political orphans um, in terms of a worldview uh, of the Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative um, and we're, we, we would just identify as Christian. And the reason we do so is because we are born into the family of God. Uh, that word citizenship in Philippians that says that our citizenship is in heaven. Uh, the idea there is, uh, it's a Greek word called polichuma. It's actually the word that we get for politics in Greek. And it's also the word that we get for police. Uh, the idea is 
um, that our constitution, our governing um, mandates, they are in heaven. And so our loyalty is, uh, you know, first and foremost to King Jesus. And uh, it doesn't mean that we can't stand up for the, th the issues that generally align with the party that's more aligned with the morality shown in Scripture. Uh, it doesn't mean that we don't stand up for pro-life. It doesn't mean that we don't stand up for, um, you know, uh, proper sexuality or some of the issues that are pressing today. Um, but it does mean that our hope lies in our identity as Christians first and foremost, and we need to be very careful because tribalism, uh, the idea of really connecting our identity to a political party is very attractive. It actually is a religious activity in a sense, is that we can become very loyal to uh, these movements, these missions. And we have to remember, again, as a Christian, as a born again believer, your mission is the great commission. Go therefore. Um, and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I commanded, that Jesus commanded uh, them to do. And this is something um, that we need to remember. That is our mission in the midst of all this. And guys, just wake up for a second and realize the territory is so ripe. The harvest is coming in terms of what a wonderful time to preach the gospel. Suffering is is almost always the door to the reception of the gospel. It, it is always the path. And so we, we are, have this wonderful spiritual landscape right now um, where suffering is revealing um, the bankruptcy of the uh, self-reliancy that we all have as human beings, that we need to actually put our hope and faith in Christ or, or something other than ourselves, something other than this world. And so I just say, don't miss it. Um, I know that the physical landscape is, is, is bleak. I know the physical landscape is difficult. I know it's tumultuous, but the spiritual landscape is wonderful right now. Um, it's a great opportunity uh, for preaching the gospel and fulfilling the mission uh, for the church. Yeah. Great stuff there, Dale. And, um, uh, you know, uh, I want to point out that you made me think of something as you were going through that and, um, it's to really consider what is our ultimate mission? What is our purpose primarily? Our mission is to um, spread the gospel and to preach the gospel to as many people as possible and share the, the good news that can be found in Christ. It's not to win an argument or to, or to get your policy passed. I mean, again, I want those policies passed too, but I think we can conflate those things and make that our ultimate goal. And I think that's what you're getting at there. Um, and so when we lose focus of, Okay, our mission ultimately uh, is to glorify God, is to preach the good news, and to um, ultimately bring about His ultimate purposes. Um, you know, He we're, we're the chosen vehicle. You know, He chose us to spread His word, and so I, I think we got to focus on that as our main uh, main goal. Do we not? No, I mean I think this is totally um, this is totally the case. I'm actually looking up something here uh, on an article I wrote. I, I once wrote. The church often forgets that politics follow the culture. It's not our job, or sorry, it is our job to change hearts. When we change yeah. hearts, we will change the culture, which will result in a change of politics, right? So it's the idea is let's not go fight for political issues. That is the fruit, not the root. And the way that you get the heart is preaching the gospel and God changes the hearts, right? Is that that, that is the way that we get to the root issue is we don't talk necessarily. I mean, it's, we condemn sinful behavior. Yes. But we don't try to, we're not behavior modifying agents. That's not what we're out here to yeah. do and change your behavior, better behavior. Right. We, we would say, Hey, better behavior. But at the root of this is, is repent and believe on Christ. When you can change the heart, the behavior will change. The culture will change and the politics will ultimately change. Absolutely. Good stuff. All right. I want to go over your post that you had on the, on January 6th, Dale, that you, that you did that resonated with a lot of people. And, um, uh, I want to cover that because I think it's important as we discuss how we move forward and how do we as Christians posture ourselves, uh, in the midst of a 2021 that appears to be kicking off to, uh, an even more tumultuous start than, uh, what we saw in 2020, if that seems even possible. So, uh, we'll be back on the other side of the break. This is faith versus culture.
Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. Highlight your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary. Or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible. All in one place. The CBN Bible. Available at CBN.com Bible or the iTunes App Store. This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Watch breaking news. Exclusive stories and programs. Credible news reporting. We show you what's happening in the world and how you can pray about it. This is CBN Newswatch because truth matters. Weekdays at 5 on the CBN News Channel. Superbook fans, here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> it's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy to understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta da! Come oh, sorry, pardon me, sorry, excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. All right, we're back on Faith versus Culture. Dan Andrews here, Dale Partridge there. And uh, we were talking about the, we're having a tough conversation here because there are a lot of idols that we all have, whether they're obvious or a little bit lurking beneath the surface there that I think we all need to slay. And um, uh, I think we all have a lot of political idols, you know, it's subtly or obviously um, to one extent or another. And um, I think we need to Really examine that right now, and I and I know that's going to frustrate a lot of people. I, I know it is because I get I get the messages whenever I bring this up that we need to trust in God. And I want to read your reaction on January sixth, Dale. This is what you posted on Instagram. It says, "Days like today will reveal the location of your hope. History shows that kingdoms fall. However, history also shows that God's kingdom never falls. Place your hope here in Christ, the one true King." And um, it's tough to get people to really believe that surprisingly <laughs> yeah i think that we have dan is we have american christianity has detached itself from historical christianity uh, we've actually made um, nationalism a rival against our views of the faith and we forget that christianity is worldwide and uh, eternal and universal in the sense that there is uh, a kingdom that is filled with the past, present, and future saints. And that kingdom is bigger and greater and better uh, than the kingdom that we fight so passionately for. And um, now I'm not diminishing the reality that we need to stand up for righteousness uh, in our own civic duty. Uh, but I am saying is that our hope needs to not be there because we, when we look historically, there is no kingdom that has not fallen. That's an earthly kingdom, right? Every kingdom will yeah. fall, including the United States at some point. Um, it, historically, if we just look through through history, just go back. There is not one kingdom that has ever stood continually on. They all fall and they all change. And that's actually to show us that everything is futile. Everything is, is breaking down. Everything changes. The only one consistency, the only one um, thing that remains the same, the only one thing that we can put our hope and trust in forever is Christ and his kingdom. And, um, you know, in John chapter three, Jesus says that you can't even see the kingdom of God unless you've been born again. And this is so important that we must be born again. And Guys, if you are sitting there and you don't know if you've been born again, 
Um, you don't know if you have a philosophical view of Jesus where you have an intellectual head knowledge or that you came to Christ or you came to the church without ever coming to Christ. Um, sometimes these issues of focus so heavily on um, behavior and um, you know carnal change or physical change or standing up for righteousness um, they're evidences that we're missing the kingdom. We're not seeing the kingdom. And I can't tell you how many people I have met over the years who thought they were Christians for 10 years and were actually not ever born again. And they had been going to church and they just never had that experience of being born again. And I'm not saying that I don't want to convince anybody that they're not born again. But what I do want to say is do some self-examination. Uh, get before the Lord and say, Lord God, please Show me your kingdom. Show me your truth. Repent of your sin. Place all your hope in Christ. Uh, recommit yourself to Christ in that deep detail. And just watch the Lord work in your heart and your life and your eyes and your ears and your passions and the things that you focus on. Because now is the time not to be focusing on, on you know, uh, things that are going to pass. Now is the time to focus on eternal things. This is a wonderful time to be alive as a Christian. Uh, it's just, we have so much communication at our fingertips. We have so much opportunity for the Great Commission. Um, our hearts can't get tangled up in the issues of this time in, the, in this world. Get out there, preach the gospel, beg the Lord to give you a vision of the kingdom, that, he can, that you can see what's really going on, and that our focus shouldn't be first about politics. It should be about the gospel, Get out there and have conversations with your friends about the gospel, not about Trump or Biden or whatever else is going on. Guys, we are just lose the focus on the politics. It's important. It's important. It's not nearly as important as the gospel. And that's my, my hope and prayer for you guys is just to get yeah. out there and work heavily on, on seeing the kingdom. Absolutely. And it's not nearly as important. It's not nearly as transformative. As you mentioned, Dale, transforming hearts and winning people to the kingdom of Christ and, and um, be allowing yourself to be that vehicle for God to, you know, that he uses to open people's eyes. Let that be first and foremost. And then people will see, okay, well, this is, I obviously can't support that politically because it goes against my belief. So you, like you said, it'll be downstream. So um, yeah, let me, uh, let me say one more thing too. If you're one of these people that are struggling to know if you've been born again, and if you found yourself caught up in, you know, religiosity, or if you find yourself caught up in, um, you know, m political religion in a sense, um, and, and you're really struggling to have this, this assurance of your relationship with God, there's two great books you should read. Um, one is Saved Without a Doubt by John MacArthur. And it really just talks about John chapter three and what it means to be born again. Um, and then New Life in Christ by uh, Dr. Stephen Lawson. Great resources that I think will reorient, uh, reorient your heart and your eyes and, your, and your, your spirit and your soul on the kingdom to realize this is the priority. And it will also help you have that assurance um, that you are a born-again believer. And, uh, and if you aren't a born-again believer, it will help make that evident that you can sit before the Lord in repentance and faith um, and be born again, as John 3 says. So I just want to encourage that. I think that so much of the root issue that we're dealing with in American Christianity is that our, our faith is anemic. It's, it's malnourished. It's weak. It's flabby. It's lazy. It's fat. It's, it's just, we're, we're just in this comfortable Christianity for so long that we need to to recommit ourselves to the reading of scripture, to the core tenets of the gospel, and to a vision of the kingdom, and asking God for those truths to be revealed to you. I think that's the solution, is that if the Lord opens the eyes and ears of the heart, then he will give you the great work to do in your life. He will give you those things to fight for, but it will be centered upon his kingdom and not the world system. Absolutely. Amen. Great stuff there. Um, one more segment coming up on the other side of the break. And I want to, um, I want to talk about going forward. How do we position ourselves? Cause there is one element that is missing 
majorly from the conversation today uh, on both sides. So we'll talk about that uh, coming up on the other side of the break. Faith versus culture back in a second. When I came to Regent University, it's like the world opened up. I felt like I needed to advance my career and go back to school. Regent was a perfect fit for me. The Regent professors are world class. You are equipped. The focus of the faculty is on each individual student, whether it's online or in person. You become a part of Regent's family. You carry with you not just the content and the knowledge, but the confidence to understand that we can be significant in the world. Regent University, follow your path. Nigerian Christians are Christians being Christians in Iran are routinely arrested. Happily Christians of their continue to suffer. In times of trial and affliction, you need to know the truth. One of the fastest growing Christian populations in the world. Join Wendy Griffith and George Thomas for Christian World News. Young people are the ones who are open to the gospel. Powerful stories of suffering and hope that affect all Christians. Watch Christian World News Saturday at 5 p.m. Get Protect Your Sleep and discover how to improve the quality of your life. A free DVD or booklet from the Christian Broadcasting Network. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Five leading experts help remove the obstacles between you and restorative sleep. When you don't get a restful night's sleep, you wake up with an accumulation of stress. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet today. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. You'll discover how food affects your sleep, how to put insomnia to rest, explore effective remedies for sleep apnea, and much more in Protect Your Sleep. Wake up to your best life and get Protect Your Sleep today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet. All right, we are back on Faith versus Culture. Dan Andrews here, Dale Partridge there. You can uh, contact us easily at contact at faithwire.com. We'd like to hear your thoughts, your suggestions, anything else you want to throw our way. So, um, so what is missing, Dale, from the conversation? And I think... Um, in addition to what you've covered there with the, with the adherence to kind of just putting too much hope in country and politics, um, one of the things I've noticed is very absent from the conversation, in particular when we talk about going forward. And uh, to me, it's the grace component. I don't hear a lot of it. Grace is a component that's absolutely missing, and grace is a component that is absolutely essential to the Christian walk because Christ forgave us, therefore, that empowers us to forgive other people. And so... Um, again, that doesn't mean people are absolved of their actions, but internally we have to have grace. And what I see now on both sides to some extent, but is uh, vindictiveness. I, I feel it being a more vindictive and punitive movement rather than one that's marked by grace and um, forgiveness. Yeah, Dan, um, I think that I think of the quote in First John 4, 8 that says, anyone who does not love does not know God for God is love. And so it becomes quickly evident um, who knows God and who doesn't based off of the way that they respond to other people? Do they extend love? Do they extend grace? Do they extend mercy? We cannot extend those attributes if they have not first been extended to us. And when we have experienced love through the gospel, when we've experienced mercy through the gospel, when we've experienced grace through the gospel, we can extend those things to others. Now, for those that have not experienced those things, they cannot extend those things. They can extend these carnal attributes, these, um, you know, th these elements of kindness that are really focused on self, uh, self-righteousness in a sense. Yeah. But true, genuine, sacrificial, laboring, serving, uh, doesn't make sense to the world type of love can only come from those who have been redeemed by Christ and experienced that type of love. And so it becomes quickly evident who is redeemed and who isn't. And, you know, we need to look at this whole situation as Christians to examine the fruit. Who has love and who doesn't? Do I have love is the question. Am I extending mercy and grace and love? And if I'm not, why? These are important questions. And I think that we all need to be, again, going back to the throne, asking the Lord to extend that grace, mercy, that peace, that love, 
so that we can extend it to others. Amen. Well, that is about all the time we have for tonight. And um, hopefully we've given you some things to ponder here, some things to help point you in a in a, in a direction that would get you cl- walking more closely with Christ. And, uh, and hopefully this show is a little bit of a roadmap for you to get you started. So um, thanks for watching and uh, we'll be back to wrap it up right after this. Christians around the world are standing with the Israelis, but why? In CBN's free magazine, Friends of Israel, you'll discover why Christians are supporting the Jewish state, how Israel is fulfilling prophecy as a light to the nations, and ways you can pray for the people of Israel. Israel needs the support of friends like you. Call now or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Friends of Israel. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the work of your spirit, Lord God, with this movement of getting the Bible, Lord, into public school. Watch The Prayer Link, Tuesday nights at 6.30. That is all the time we have for this episode of Faith versus Culture. Thanks, as always, for watching and for supporting the CBN News Channel. You know, um, big tech is cracking down everywhere on certain kinds of speech that they deem uh, unacceptable or hate speech. And uh, certainly, we appreciate your viewership. And we encourage you to uh, download everything you can from CBN, our app. Um, go to the website daily. Make it a daily stop because uh, big tech is only going to get uh, increasingly uh, more restrictive from this point going forward. And um, we have to operate under that assumption because uh, that's the warnings they've been giving us. That's the things we've been seeing happening. Um, so uh, only certain kinds of speech are going to be allowed. So do what you can to support CBN, to support networks that share your values. So God bless you. Thank you for watching. And we will see you next time.